Okay, good students of AP Bio, I am going to go over transcription and translation for you guys. Try to keep this to an overview, but also show you some videos and also show you some other things that might tie it all together. It's a rather important topic and it ties together a number of different pieces from AP Bio. So first of all, transcription and translation is better known as from gene to protein. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to take our DNA, which has the code, somehow a code for making a protein locked inside of it. That gene, that segment of DNA, again, a gene is a segment of DNA. And we're going to try to get it from DNA into mRNA. That's transcription. So we're going to transcribe or copy it into mRNA. And then we are going to translate it into a sequence of amino acids, better known as a polypeptide or a amino acid chain or in total, a protein. So that's what transcription and translation are going to do. You want to grab a notebook. We're going to be taking some notes here and you'll want to be able to pause this thing from time to time as there's some good drawings and some good animations. So make sure that you're ready for that. All right. So first up is transcription and transcription is the process of taking DNA and transcribing it or copying it into mRNA. So a couple of terms here that come up and that are needed for AP and that is um, these terms over here. So we'll get them down in our notes here in one second. I found this diagram. I think it's a pretty good one. Here's a chromosome. And as we've learned, that chromosome is made up of coiled DNA or wrapped up DNA. Remember around histones, right? So that coiled DNA. And if we uncoil it and we look at it, there's going to be a segment along here or a long little uh, point, basically, from like here to here. And that segment is going to be called a gene and the gene is just going to code for a protein right so what we need to do is we need to get to that gene i'm going to point out that this diagram does not include something called a promoter region a promoter region is a series of dna letters which we'll get to here in a little bit i've got another slide for it but a promoter region is usually upstream and it's it's basically like an area on the dna here that is going to promote transcription. So it's going to say, hey, go ahead and start transcribing me. Um, there's a gene right downstream from me here. It's kind of like a sign on the DNA strand itself. And then there's going to be a terminal region or, or a terminator region, and that will be towards the end over here somewhere. And that region will basically point out that like, yep, you're done. You, you can stop copying the DNA. Okay. So what we're going to hear, what we're going to notice here is a couple of different things. We're going to notice, first of all, that there is um, a sense strand. That's the strand that we really want to make a copy of. And then the anti-sense strand. Now, ironically, when we make a copy of the sense strand, we're actually going to do this. Because the sense strand is, like this one starts out with T, A, C. Well, what was paired up with it in the first place? T was paired with A, and A was paired with T, and C was paired with G. See how they were complementary on both sides here, right? So if we make a copy of the copy, like an inverse of that. If we make a copy of the copy, this strand here that we're going to make, then this RNA transcript, this RNA copy, is essentially going to be the same as the, sen uh, the sense strand here, except that uracils are going to be in there instead of thiamines, that U's are going to be used instead of T's. So you'll notice that the anti-sense strand, that's like a temp this is like the, the template or the opposite side, right? And then you're going to copy over, like, so A pairs with U, and T pairs with A, and G pairs with C, and A pairs with U. And this thing called polymerase, there's our good friend polymerase, there's our enzyme polymerase. Uh, and in fact, it's RNA polymerase 2. Remember, we learned about what 1 and 3 do. RNA polymerase 2 comes into play here. And it copies, and you guessed it, it copies in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And it's going to lay down the correct RNA pieces here. And so that's going to go along and it's going to make a copy of the anti-sense strand. Now, if you've made a copy of the complement of the sense strand, you've essentially made a copy of the sense strand. Except, again, U's are in there instead of T's. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. We'll watch a video here in a second of that. Once that mRNA is made, so I'll back up here just real quickly, this thing is going to kick out a long strand of mRNA. So this strand is going to continue to grow until we hit, it's going to go in this direction, it's going to keep going until we hit this terminator region, and then the polymerase is going to fall off and say, all right, this RNA is on its own. 
once that RNA is made, that mRNA is kind of a, a raw material. It's kind of a rough draft. And there are parts of it called introns and parts of it called exons. Introns are the parts that we don't want. So if you're taking notes, again, you should be taking notes. Introns are the parts that we're going to snip out of here. And exons are the parts that we're going to express. I'm using those words very specifically to help you remember. Exons expressed. So that's the part you keep. Okay. So how does it do this? It uses these things called small nuclear ribonucleic proteins or something like that. Um, they're affectionately called SNRPs. You can just remember them as SNRPs. It's kind of a fun word to say. So SNRPs are over here on this diagram. So this is a SNRP, or these are all little SNRPs. They're little proteins. And what they will do is they will identify an intron on the mRNA strand and they will bunch up in this area. So notice that all those guys hop on board there and they basically like pull that whole thing together. And you end up with um, a unit here, another protein will come in and this whole unit overall is called a spliceosome, spliceosome. And that spliceosome then will cut the RNA here and here. And when it cuts that, it'll bring these two ends together and then it will just get rid of this intron. So it just dumps that out of there. So you can see that in the diagram here, okay? So introns get spliced out by SNRPs, which form spliceosomes. And then the mature RNA or the finished RNA has one final step, it needs a package, and it needs like, like a bow on it basically. It's like, okay, you're all done. What it needs to do is we put a, a, on the five prime end, we put a guanine, just a singular guanine. And on the three prime end, we put a poly A tail. So a G cap and a poly A tail is what they're called. Basically what these are are identifiers, because remember this is all happening inside the nucleus. So when this happens inside the nucleus, this mRNA wants to leave the nucleus. And so the problem is, is that it can't just all by itself, it needs this end here and it needs this end here as a ticket to leave the nucleus. In other words, the proteins that are like channel proteins in the membrane of the nucleus, they identify these things and they go, okay, you're, you're clear. You can go ahead and go through. Okay. So that's what this G cap and poly A tail are all about. So introns, exons, get out of the, get the introns out of there, bring it all together. Now you got your final mRNA that you want, G cap, poly A tail. Okay. So let's take a look at a, a quick video of this. I'm going to speed this thing up here so that I've got this, uh, thing kind of flying along. So here we go. So there's the gene that we want. And there's your promoter region and your terminator region that they're trying to identify here. And I'll just kind of go through this. That promoter region is where the RNA polymerase is going to hop on board. So that's pull two. It's going to hop on board there and it's going to pull the strands apart. So it's going to show you kind of an up close thing here. So, and again, I'm going along on this fast, but it's pulling that thing apart. Now in this diagram, the scent strand is up here and the anti-scent strand is down here. And we're going to make a copy of the anti-sense or we're going to make a copy basically of this, right? We're going to make a complement of it, I should say. And it's going to build this thing in five prime to three prime. And remember that we're building RNA here. So this is new RNA that's going in there. And that little strand is just going to feed on out of there. Okay. Now what this video doesn't do is, well, they, they show that there's a terminator region here. And then this thing gets to the end, hops off, and then there's our mRNA. Now it's not processed yet. There's still parts that are exons that we want, and there's parts that are introns that we don't want. So we got to employ these SNRPs, right? So SNRPs come to play and spliceosomes. And what they're going to do, they'll hopefully show it. There we go. There's all our little SNRPs, and they're going to bind that thing up. It's going to form a spliceosome, and it's going to get rid of that intron. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And we've got our five prime cap and our poly A tail. And now we can leave the nucleus. So that's what that little diagram does, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit better sense to you. Okay, one more little piece here as we finish up, and that would be to take a look at, and by the way, that video that we just watched is down here. It's linked on there for you, so if you want to take a look at that some other time. And one other piece here that we need to talk a little bit more in detail about is called promoters and transcription factors. So we have that promoter region. And that promoter region has a couple of different pieces to it. So we need to take some notes on this. The promoter region is usually, and so let's, let's take a look at this. What they're not showing on here is that what this, the gene is here. So that's your gene, that's your DNA, right? 
Okay, so your double helix, right? The promoter region is right in this area, just upstream of the gene. It usually has a series of TA, 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 kind of repeating over and over again in front of it. So it's affectionately called the ta, -ta box. So there's this promoter region called the ta, ta box where RNA polymerase will recognize that promoter region and it will clamp on. So it hops on board in the promoter region. Um, once that RNA polymerase is in, um, in place, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go right away. So our diagrams and our videos so far have shown that like polymerase just takes off and goes. There's a couple other pieces here that are, are, are part of the puzzle that we're figuring out. There are also another place on here called an enhancer. So an enhancer is another region upstream. So rem remember here, we're going upstream when we go this way. Upstream on the DNA, way up here somewhere. The DNA kind of curves around a little bit. There are places on here called enhancers. And those enhancers are binding sites on the DNA. They're actually made out of DNA still, but they're binding sites where activators, chemicals, hormones usually hop on board. And what they do is they activate that place and they make it so that this entire process can take part. And you're gonna see a really good animation here in a second, but we'll just throw the vocab term in here. These are called activators. So activators are chemicals that bind to enhancer regions. And again, what are activators typically? They're typically hormones. So a, a specific rush of hormones like adrenaline um, will cause those, um, those chemicals, adrenaline, to hop on board and activate uh, the enhancer region. Now an enhancer region by itself, again, doesn't mean the gene is gonna be transcribed. Another thing here that has to happen is transcription factors. These are proteins that bind to the promoter region. So proteins that bind to the promoter region once the RNA polymerase is in place. And you'll see in the video here in a second. So we have um, these um, transcription factors. They're proteins. And what they do is they help in basically induce or start transcription. Okay, and then finally, the last thing that has to happen is this thing called the DNA bending protein, and that's over here, and that DNA bending protein, it'll basically, the DNA, remember, was straight here before, it was, it went out this way, but the DNA bending protein will cause the activators to come in contact with the transcription factors, all these little blobs here, and then those transcription factors will activate the polymerase to just go, okay? So I'll say that one more time so you can take a note on it. But the bending protein causes the activators that are on the enhancer to come in contact with the transcription factors so that they can activate the polymerase to just go. And we're gonna watch a really good video of that here in one second, here we go. So we're gonna watch a quick video of this. These are uh, this is a promoter region, and I'm going to speed this video up here just a little bit so that we can go faster here. This promoter region is basically going to say, hey, uh, polymerase, you need to come on board here. You need to hop on board here. And so polymerase, in a, in a second here in the video, is going to come flying in. There it is. There's our RNA polymerase, that blue chunk is. Now, these are transcription factors, these different colors that are on here. And notice, like almost like a garage, they park the polymerase inside the garage. Now, then the next piece that has to happen here is notice that the polymerase is not working all by itself yet. It's not just going along. So what needs to happen here is that these activator proteins need to come and play. Activator proteins are on the enhancer and they were bent by that bending protein to come in contact with that thing. So what they're gonna do here is they're gonna come in contact with it and they're gonna spring that trap and that trap is gonna pop open and you're gonna see polymerase go flying out. Bing, and there it goes, okay? So we'll watch that again here. It comes in contact with it. It opens up the whole thing. We'll watch it again. That thing comes in contact, pops it open, and there goes RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase goes speeding down the track, sense and anti-sense strands. It's pulling in RNAs, and it's making a long strand of messenger RNA. So that's the ultimate process of transcription, and there you have it.